how are we doing today? I know what you're thinking. Taylor, this couldn't possibly fly, right? Well, today we're gonna show you how to build an odd rocket. And while searching online, this just happened to pop up in my Amazon recommended products. And I don't think we're gonna have to do anything to make this a stable rocket. It's gonna create enough base drag for it to fly. All right, step one of the banana build. I'm taking a piece of cardboard here uh, and just cutting a rough square a little bit bigger than the dimensions of the back of the banana uh, to make a pattern for the motor mount. Uh, the cardboard just makes it a little bit easier to make a pattern because it's an odd shape and so I'll just trim a little bit off and a little bit more off until I get a, a a perfect fit in there. Um, and it's, it's easier to work with cardboard than it is plywood. And... So I just traced the cardboard pattern onto some quarter inch plywood and we're gonna make the centering rings. Put some 916s nylon uh, epoxy on the motor tube, and then we're just test fitting everything. Uh, here I'm putting a little bit of CA on there to hold it and hold that back ring in place. The front ring's already epoxyed on, um, and I'll just take a tape measure and check the reveal to the back of that banana. Make sure it's setting square with everything, and let that CA dry. Now that it's tacked on there, it's going to mix up a little bit of five minute epoxy to do some fillets on that motor tube assembly. Um, lately I've been using the West Systems five minute epoxy. Uh, I really like it. It's just a little bit better than the Bob Smith epoxy and it seems to cure a little bit harder and acts a little bit more like a real epoxy than with uh, not as much filler in it. Now I'm taking a piece of quarter inch Kevlar and just tying it around the motor tube. Uh, this will be the shoot leader, um, which will it'll make a little bit more sense when I explain how this all works later, but this is for rear ejection. We're just gonna push it up against that ring and then when we do a fillet, that'll sort of encapsulate the whole thing with glue. Um, and of course, I forgot to put the launch lug on. Um, with an odd rock like this, you can't have rail buttons on the outside because of the odd shape. So we're gonna put the we're gonna have the launch rod go through the middle of the rocket. Um, that was just poor planning on my part. So now you can see I'm marking uh, where that hole needs to be drilled, and I'm getting my trusty two foot long half inch paddle bit that I just happen to have. It's it saved a lot of projects, and uh, we're gonna put that tube in there, and then we'll we'll. Uh, up CA in place, uh, tack it. And I also decided it would be a good idea to put some uh, shear pins right behind the rear ring. So this is rear ejection, which means the parachute will come out the rear and the whole motor mount assembly will actually eject with the parachute. But without it being a really good fit, you always run the risk of that dropping out the bottom. So putting a couple of shear pins in there just keeps that from happening. And then to secure the shot cord on the top end, I'm just going to pot it into with some epoxy into that, uh, the bandana stem, if you will, the front of the rocket. So if you notice, the tip of the banana has a little bit of a curve in it. Um, I don't want to give too much away, but I think we need one that's straight because I didn't plan on how much weight 
this uh, epoxy was going to add to the tip of the rocket. And not only that, but the weight that's in the tip is off-center, and that's really the problem. The weight is beneficial, but not off-center weight. All right, so here's the finished product. I went ahead and did some fillets on everything, um, and I can, I'll just go ahead, go ahead and show you how this works. So uh, I, it's set up for rear ejection. So it's set up for rear ejection, which if you ever flown a little Estes like R2-D2, or they had a kit called the Sizzler, then you're probably already familiar with that, but it works really well on an odd rock like this because it would it would take a lot of work to make a coupler and everything with how this is. And so when I saw this tapered um, banana, uh, that was the first thing I thought of. Um, and so I ended up potting the the uh, shock cord and epoxy in the since this was already removable. Um, and then, so that's how the shock cord's anchored there. And then, um, this is the motor mount assembly, and the parachute actually goes in between the steering rings, and so that will actually protect the parachute. And then, uh, so it's really easy to prep to fly. The shock cord just goes in ahead of that. Um, you can put some wadding in there. Uh, I drilled a hole for the launch rod. I'm using a launch rod instead of a rail because uh, it would be really hard to get rail buttons to work on this since it's tapered. Um, <laughs> of course. Yeah, so I ended up adding a um, launch lug there. Use the, and then I have a little eight, uh, quarter inch Kevlar leader here. Um, and you just pack the chute and it goes around there. And then you line up your launch rod with the launch lug with the hole at the top. And then that just slides in. And um, I don't know if I'll we'll use them or not yet, but I did drill a hole on each side here, a 564 hole that I can use to put a couple 256 nylon screws for shear pins. Because what would be bad is if this were sitting on the pad and uh, that happened. <laughs> so um, I will probably end up doing that. But. Yeah, so this is the this is the wet banana as I'm calling it, um, and it will fly this weekend at Midwest Power. I'm really excited how this build turned out. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and I will see you next time on the Rocket Channel. It's got rear ejection. Of course, it's a heads up rocket. Going in five, four, three, two, one. Yep. <laughs>